Okay, speed of the car when t is at two seconds. We can use acceleration. Acceleration equals to negative V, sorry, equals to Vf minus Vi over T. Okay, and just now we had deceleration as 2.4. So acceleration must be negative 2.4. Because acceleration is negative deceleration, right? It's the opposite in sign. So Vf, this time is the the speed that we want at time equals to 2 seconds. So we don't know what that is. Leave it. Minus initial speed. What was it? From the graph is 12. So minus 12. And what was the time taken? 2. You only have one equation with one unknown. You can solve it. So negative 4.8 equals to Vf minus 12. Therefore, Vf is equal to 12 minus 4.8, and we get, how much we get? 7.2 meters per second. Okay? What is another way of looking at this? We know that it is decelerating at 2.4 meters per square second. In other words, for every one second, the speed goes down by 2.4, correct? So after one second, it goes down by 2.4. After one second, it goes down by 2.4. After two seconds, it goes down by another 2.4. So we can also take simply 12 or Vf is equal to 12 minus 2 times of 2.4. You will still get the same answer. Okay. Okay, next, a man pushes a box. And what are the keywords over here? Was what do you think is a keyword that I need from this? Okay, resultant force. What else? From the first sentence, something very important. Constant speed. Okay, so what does this tell me? Zafira, what does this tell me? No acceleration. So acceleration equals to zero. This is the resultant acceleration, right? So what can I imply? Really wrong? What can I imply if acceleration is zero? There are no resultant acceleration, so what do we know from that? Something equals to M a. What is this something? F, yes. And what is this F over here? Resultant force, right? Your resultant force is equal to the mass times the resultant acceleration. Since your acceleration is zero, what does that tell you about the resultant force? Shruti, what's the resultant force? I can't hear you. I think I can speak louder than you. Huh? 50 times times what? Why 0 0.2? Why 0? Yes. So this is equal to 50 times 0 equals to 0. There is no resultant force when it is moving at a constant speed because 
there is no acceleration. Okay? So this is it. Part B, the size of the force of friction acting on the box. Is it strange that... Okay, let's draw the free body diagram. Huh? Okay, we have a, a man pushing it. 80 newtons of force. Currently, I only draw in one force, right? Which is 80. In other words, the resultant force is 80 newtons to the right. So if there is a resultant force, there should be acceleration, right? But in this case, there is no acceleration because there is no resultant force. That means there is another force acting on this so that you can cancel away the 80 newtons to the right. And what will this missing force be? What do we call this missing force? Frictional force, yes. And what is the magnitude of the frictional force? Yes, it is also 80 newtons, frictional force. So, 80 newtons. Okay, define inertia. It is the reluctance of a body to change its state of motion or rest. Important. There are two parts. So if something is moving, inertia doesn't want it to stop. If something is at rest, inertia doesn't want it to start moving. Okay? So the greater the mass, the greater the inertia. <coughs> okay, part B. Lorries. They are supposed to have a lower speed than cars. Why? Yes, this? Greater? Why do you say that? Yes, so you need to state that they have a higher mass, then you tell me they have a greater inertia. So what is the, what's the problem with that? So what if they have a higher inertia? So what? Okay, so first part is correct, huh? The lorries, have greater mass, thus greater inertia. So what is the next part? So what? Sorry? Yes, it is harder for them to stop. So they will take a longer time to stop. Therefore, they take a longer time to stop. <coughs> Anybody else has any other answers? Then I have a question. When you are in a car, traveling at a high speed, now imagine you are in a car sitting down, huh? then the car turns left. How, what do you feel? Do you feel anything? When you are turning, when the car is turning left, what happens to your body? What do you feel? You feel like you are going to shift to the right, correct? When you are turning left, then you suddenly there is a force pushing, pushing you to the right. That's what you feel, isn't it? Do you know why? Because of your inertia. Initially, you are traveling straight. So your body doesn't want to change direction. Your body doesn't want to slow down. It doesn't want to speed up. It doesn't want to change direction. So when your car turns left, your body still wants to go to the front. Therefore, you feel like you are being pushed to the right. Okay? So that is the reason. It is called a centripetal force, not your syllabus. Okay, so now imagine 
you have a car and a lorry. They are both traveling at the same high speed. They both turn. Which one is safer? Car safer, right? What could happen to the lorry if it is traveling at a high speed and then it turns very quickly? It may flip. It may overturn. So why? Because of the same reason that we mentioned just now. Okay, that's a centripetal force. What else? We have, when we talk about something overturning, flipping, we talk about a turning effect, right? So that is moments. What is the CG position of a lorry compared to a car? Ah, lorry higher, right? So the CG naturally will also be higher. If the CG is higher, it is unstable. If it's unstable, it may topple uh, more easily than a car. Okay, so that is another reason that you can state. So you can say that they have a high center of gravity, the lorry will be unstable when turning at a high speed. Okay, so I'm not going to write that down, you can just know it. Next, a uh, table lamp. This table lamp has three portions. What can you do to make it more stable? Standard question, huh? make it more stable, you need to consider two things. First, what can we do? What do we do in the base area? Enlarge it, make it bigger. Enlarge base area. What is the second thing that we can do? Sorry? Make the shade smaller. Uh, if I am not referring to this question, I am just talking generally. How do you improve stability? We can enlarge the base area, what else can we do? Lower the center of gravity. Okay, so lower C, G. Now, back to this question. First thing we can do is number one, enlarge base area. Second thing we can do must be to lower the CG. How do we lower the CG? Moas has given a suggestion. Make the shade smaller. So if the shade is smaller, then the mass of the shade is smaller. The shade is now lighter, right? If the shade is lighter, then the CG will go down. So that is one possible answer. We make the shade smaller. How else can you make the CG go down? Say again. Make the base heavier. Yes, you can do that also. What else? Can you do something to the stem? Uh, we make the stem shorter. Lah. Make the stem shorter. Or make the base heavier. Or make the shape smaller or lighter. So over here, this is one and two. So many ways to lower the CG, but only one way to make the base bigger. Okay, next. There's a uniform plank, one meter long. When they say it is a uniform plank, that means it has a uniform density. So where is the CG? Kasha, where's the CG? It is uniform plank. Yeah, it must be in the middle because it is uniform. So a uh, mark with an X. Okay, it's somewhere in the middle, X. Now, if they don't tell you it is uniform, Then I don't know where is the CG. Non uniform plank. Maybe this part is made of plastic. Maybe this part made of metal. <coughs> where do you think is the CG? Is it going to be right in the middle again? No, it is going to be nearer to the metal. Okay, this is the CG. This is non-uniform, but if it is uniform, it's right in the middle. 
calculate the clockwise moment caused by the weight of the plank. Where is the weight going to act on? Junior? Where is the weight acting on? Yes, the weight is acting at the center of gravity. In fact, the definition of center of gravity is the point where the whole weight appears to hang on, right? The whole mass of uh, the whole weight appears to hang on. So this is our weight over here. Know that it's equal to mg. La. So clockwise movement caused by the weight. Is equal to the force, in this case, which is the weight, equals to 1.2 times 10. Okay, this is the weight. Now, this is multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action of force. So, this distance, how much is it? Yes, 0 0.5 meters. Because it's right in the middle. 0 0.5. So we get 6 Newton meters. Okay. Is there any anti clockwise moment? So wait, is there any anti-clockwise moment on the diagram? Don't have. You don't see anything pushing it up, right? Nobody is pushing it up, right? So if there is no anti-clockwise moment, the resultant must be clockwise, isn't it? If the resultant is clockwise, then it should turn, right? Is it turning? Why not? The question says it is held horizontally. So why isn't it turning? Use the logic. Ah, yes, there's a rope holding on to it, right? Why does the rope cause it to stay horizontal? That means the rope must be providing anti-clockwise moment. The rope is providing an anti-clockwise moment. And what is the magnitude of this anti-clockwise moment? It is, yes, it is equals to the magnitude of your clockwise moment, which is 6 newton meters. Okay? So let's see what the question asks next. Oh, they didn't ask. So this answer is 6. So if they ask you, what is the moment, the anti-clockwise moment, it will be 6 newton meters. Then what is the force? What is the force in this rope? Then we can calculate. Lah. We use our principle of moments. Okay, we have the distance of 1 meter then 6 newton meter is the moment. 6 divided by 1, this must be equal to 6 newtons. If they ask you, okay? Gaius, I can see you sleeping. You can't hide behind her. You can't hide behind her. I can still see you sleeping. Okay, 7A. Car. Mass. 1.5 tons. Engine 5,000 newtons forward. Friction 3,000. Two other forces I think vertically. What are they? <coughs> Sorry, what is the boss? Yeah, wait. Any more? Let's look at it vertically. Huh? Everybody is very sure there is a weight. No, CG is not a force. If there is only one force, weight acting downwards, then if only go one force, huh? that means the car will accelerate downwards. That means the car will start to tunnel into the ground and then you don't see the car anymore. But that is not possible, right? You see a car on the road, it stays on the road. Why? Because there is another force upwards that balances it, it is called the normal 
contact force, a normal reaction force. So uh, this is wait normal reaction force. Okay, so this is for 2013. Do you have any questions for the whole paper? I hope we are doing our corrections, huh? Because I'll be collecting at the end of this lesson. <laughs>